Hello friends and felines and welcome back to my channel or if you're venturing on my channel for the first time today. Hi, hello and welcome. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you leave today. But on for today's agenda, my fiance and I are going to the immersive Van Gogh experience out in Buffalo. So I thought it would finally be a good time to break this baby out and play around with it. This is the Starry Night uh, palette, eyeshadow palette from Storybook Cosmetics. It is my first eyeshadow palette from them and I've been wanting this. I think it like originally retailed for like $50 or $60, but they had it on sale like a while ago. So I bought this forever ago knowing I was going to Van Gogh today and it's been sitting in my drawer waiting for me to play around with it. So we're going to be doing a Van Gogh themed makeup look today. Probably not as extensive as the actual Starry Night because I don't have time for that. Maybe a different day. But if you want to see what kind of look I'm going to be creating today, then definitely keep on watching. Alright, so before we hop into eyeshadow, I obviously have a lot of work to do. I'm going to kind of like fly by all of the steps, but I have a bunch of new products that I wanted to test out, or I don't think I've actually like, given you guys my thoughts and opinions on them, so I thought we would also do that really quick in today's video. So to start off with primer, I'm going to go in with the Coconut Skin Smoothie Priming Moisturizer from First Aid Beauty. I think I've tried this once, but I don't think I've actually like told you guys my thoughts on it. So first impressions, it doesn't smell like coconut. It does smell very refreshing. I don't really like the smell of coconut, so I'm down with that. And it feels like a little bit of a thicker consistency. This definitely feels really, really moisturizing. Um, I'm not sure how much it's going to do for like actually like priming the skin. Because let's face it, like if there's a moisturizing primer, it's really not going to be doing much blurring or having like good adhesion to your foundation. It's mostly just like a secondary moisturizer that you put on before your makeup. Which I'm not saying is a bad thing. But a lot of places they sell these primers, which are pretty much just moisturizers. Alright, we are all primed up. Not feeling too tacky, not feeling like anything super crazy. Not much blurring going on. I have a couple of little pimples and stuff, which is not okay. They came out to play after I got my professional facial. I'll get into that in a little bit. But the next thing we're going to go into is the Perlis Ages Go Serum BB Cream with SPF 40. And yes, I've tried this and I love it. Um, it's a little bit more full coverage, I think, than the other like BB cream that I have. Um, but I'm loving the SPF 40. So as I start to pounce this into the skin, just want to tell you guys about my first professional facial experience ever. So it was part of a birthday gift from my fiance for a facial and massage and I went to Scott Miller um, on Monroe Ave. If you guys have ever been there, apparently they're like really amazing. Um, I've never gone. They are connected to a Mac store and I try to go there to get a free lipstick on National Lipstick Day and that whole day was just a fiasco. So this obviously looks a little bit lighter than it probably is meant, um, but it does kind of like oxidize once you bronze everything up. It's really not that bad. So this facial was like a full hour. She did the full works and everything, steam, like cleansing, exfoliating, mask, like face massage, shoulders, upper back, arms, hand massage. Like it was amazing. The warm towels, the steam, the... Like, I think she used like little roller balls as like a massage. Like, oh my gosh, it was the most relaxing thing ever. And I think for a while, like I felt like she was just like massaging my forehead for like a half hour straight. And I'm pretty sure like I dozed off and started like daydreaming. It was that relaxing. But like beforehand, she was like looked at my skin really up close so she could personalize the facial for me for like my skin concerns. And like, I've never heard anyone like look at my skin and tell me like what's good, what's bad, what I need to work on. And instantly she like touched my skin was like, you must drink a lot of water. I was like, yes, that's like pretty much all I drink. She goes, that's awesome. Like I can really feel it in your skin. I can feel the moisture. You're really supple. Like you bounce back. She was like pinching my skin. Um, She's like, obviously you have some redness. You have some like discoloration in your cheeks, some rosiness that we're going to focus on. Um, she said there's a little bit of congestion, congestion in the T-zone, which is common. Um, post facial that was like the clearest my nose has ever been. She said pore size isn't like too bad. I do have a couple of sensitive areas around my nose where I had distended capillaries, I think is what she said. Um, and she said that I didn't really have any discoloration or pigmentation when it comes to like sun damage, which is really awesome. So she said like overall, like she thinks my skin was looking like pretty good and that I really like try to take care of it. 
which I, I told her like I have a very extensive skincare routine. Wasn't always the case, but I've been trying it. So let me just tell you, you might not have noticed like at the beginning of the video because it's really hot in my makeup room, like I'm currently not wearing pants right now. I'm just saying it's that hot. I don't want to sweat off my makeup. But post facial, like that was like the clearest my cheeks had ever been. It was the least amount of redness just from like one facial. And she gave me like a little trial size of some face mask that is like um, de-pollution face mask as opposed to like clear up all the junk in your t-zone and help with oiliness as well as reducing redness and if that's what helped my redness and my cheeks go away I'm definitely buying it because like it is so much better I mean like even now just putting on a BB cream which isn't like super full coverage like you can still see a little bit of redness but like not as much as normal all right so now I'm gonna move on to the flawless brightening concealer from elf that I got I got my birthday gifts from them finally and I think this was free this wasn't the birthday gift I think I got this with like points so I got this in the shade Light 23C, and there's an interesting applicator. I don't know if I have to like twist this and the product comes out. I honestly like don't know how this works. Or you click it. It's a little clicky thing. We'll see how many times I have to click it for it to actually like come out. I thought it was just like a crayon or like a marker type thing that you just like put in right there. All right, I think I'm starting to finally get a little bit of product, and I'm just gonna use this like. For my eyes to help brighten up the under eye so it's definitely an interesting product I've never used anything like this before I said you can use a concealer brush or just like blend it out with your finger all right that was interesting um I thought it was just gonna be like a brightening crayon pencil thingy not that um, so I don't really know if it did much I think it did like a little bit but I think you could just brighten up with like regular powder um, so speaking of powder, I don't have any setting powder. I'm going to set the face really quick and come back. All right, so I went ahead and I lightly set the face. Now we're going to go in with the Alamar Hydrating Complexion Trio. So this kind of has like a brightening powder somewhere in the middle and then like a bronzing powder. Um, as you can see, I have not used this at all. So let's go ahead and try this out. All right, so first I'm going to take an angle brush. I'm going to go in a Cafe Con Leche because that's like the darkest one I think will be good for like bronzing up the face. It does have a slight shimmer to it, so I guess we'll have to see if that comes through or not. Mm, that looks pretty warm right off the bat. So I'm definitely not going to go heavy with this. I'm really trying to keep my makeup light as possible for summertime and being like sweaty and oily and stuff like that. I have been using a lot of, like a lot less powder to be honest, and a lot more cream products just for like a nice subtle like makeup look that's not too crazy. Um, so I'm just going in like very, very lightly with this because it does seem like on the warmer side, but it does blend out pretty nice and just gives like a nice little wash of color. doesn't come out like too strong. All right, so to help brighten up the under eyes just a little bit more, I'm going to try the Rise and Grind shade, which is the brightening shade. I'm just going to put a little bit of that underneath the eyes and see if it does anything. I can't tell if it's doing literally anything because if it is, it's probably my own skin color. So I don't know if that actually did anything or not. All right, something that like, I like some stuff from Alamar and some stuff's kind of like meh. I feel like this complexion tree was kind of meh. Now you might have recalled in my Ipsy box, I was missing a product and I reached out to them and they sent it over my way, like no questions asked. So I got the Kimchi Chic Thaler Blush. It's a two color blush. Um, the box was like a little destroyed. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and try this out. I'm excited. I've never tried anything from this brand. So this shades in here is pinky and rosé. So there are two shades in one. They both feel pretty soft and they swatch pretty nicely. Um, so I'm probably gonna go in with the shade rosé because it's a little bit more my speed. The pinky seems a little too pink for me, but I feel like I could also just swirl my brush into both of them and it would look fine. Ooh, lots of kick up in the pan with a brush. Like it literally just went all over the place. So, hopefully this won't go on like patchy. I feel like this would definitely have a lot of pigment and you could go like really ham really fast on this shade or on this blush. So definitely just be very careful about that because this is definitely a little bit more blush than I normally wear. But that's not a bad color. I think that's kind of cute. I mean, it's kimchi and she like really like had, wears a lot of blush if you know her. So it makes sense for like her brand. But I'm excited to be trying something out from her brand because I haven't before. So we're going with rosy cheeks today. 
rosy cheeks. All right, so I have a lot of powder in my face. I'm gonna go ahead and spritz the Watermelon Burst Setting Spray from Ciate Lending. Um, I think I've used this before, but I haven't actually like given you guys my thoughts and opinions on it. Oh, that's in my eye. It's in my eye. That is quite the powerful spray. It kind of like went all over, and I have like a bunch of like little water drops all over my face. It smells good though. Not overpowering, not like too heavily fragranced, but that is some spray. All right, I don't really have any new brow products. I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows off camera. We're gonna come back and we're gonna finally try to do a Van Gogh themed eyeshadow look. All right, I'm back and the brows are done. The eyes are primed and we're about to hop into the Starry Night eyeshadow palette. I did open this when I first got it and I think there was a bookmark that came with it and I used it as I was reading a book and I think it's somewhere in my fiance's car, I hope. But I mean, the packaging is wonderful. It comes out of this sleeve, looks like a book. There's like a little tab here for something. I don't know if the book marker was in here or not, but just another Starry Night themed. I mean, it literally has like the whole like color palette that the Starry Night consists of. The blues, the yellows, the greens, the orange. Like I said, we're not doing anything too crazy because I don't have time for that. And when it comes to just like eye space, I don't have enough space to like actually create like a scene on my eyes without it disappearing with like my little like skin fold. So we're probably just gonna stick to like some yellow in the inner corner and then like blue and probably just like keep it at that. So I'm gonna swatch a few of these to try to figure out exactly like which colors I wanna use. All right, I end up swatching the whole palette. Some of these swatched a lot better than some others, but we're just gonna go down the list. So starting right up here, this is 1853. Then we have Venus. Then we have Man, I think with two A's. Then we have Theo, Cypress, Rustig with a G. Then we have Firmament, Hemel, Vincent, Window, Juni, and Nocturne. So like I said, some swatch better than others. There are some really cool shades in here, some glitters, some duochromes. I'm really excited to get started with all of this. I literally have no idea which colors I'm using, but we'll see. All right, I think we're gonna do things a little bit differently. I'm gonna start off with the shade Cypress, which is this one right here. And I'm gonna put that all over my lid, just like really pack it on. All right, this I feel like is about to be really messy and I feel like you should probably have done my eyes first. Telling you this is probably gonna look really messy and then hopefully it'll all come together at the end. And we're gonna take a fluffy brush and start buffing out the edges. All right, so it's kind of a shimmery shade, but I'm gonna go in with Theo right here and I'm gonna kind of like buff out the edges with that. So it's kind of just like packing on colors and then diffusing it and hopefully we get something that will look a little bit decent. And again, I'm using blue eyeshadow and I don't think I personally look good in blue eyeshadow, but we're doing it for the sake of art. All right, next, I think I'm gonna go in with Firmament, which is kind of like this weird gray, black, blue, green thing. And I'm gonna use like an inkle brush. I'm gonna use this as a liner today. I think that's gonna be the game plan and we're gonna do that step next. I'm literally like not even breathing right now. Cool, probably just something like that and I'll probably like tight line with like a gel liner underneath. I feel like I'm just kind of all over with this like makeup, but I don't know. I'm gonna try this yellow shade up here. It kind of like came off like a bit more disgusting than I wanted it to, but I feel like we're gonna try it and that's just gonna go in the inner corner. Like, I don't even know if you can see that on camera. I'm getting nervous. Do I try to like make a little sun? I could completely mess up the makeup look right now. Mm, okay, sir. All right, now I've got a tiny, tiny, tiny little like liner thing and I'm gonna use orange and maybe make a sun. 
Maybe. Or a moon. Not a sun, a moon. Right, because it's a starry night. Gotta make more sense. And yes, I'm getting my brush wet. I don't think that did anything. <laughs> that wasn't working. Fail. All right, so I'm gonna try to get some of the Rustique, that silver glitter right over here and kind of do like little strokes of artistic wonder. That's what we're gonna call it. And sorry if you can't see much of this, I have to like really focus. Alright, so I'm just kind of doing strokes of pretty much almost every color in here, just to kind of make it a messy, artistic, hopefully something will come together out of it thing. Sure. I'm going to put a little bit of glitter glue right there and then try to put some orange like in the middle of the moon and maybe that will do something. Yeah, I think I got a little bit of orange in there. I wasn't going to do a crescent because that was not going to happen. Um, then we're just going to do something on the lower lash line and do the other eye and I'll be right back. All right, these are the eyes all complete. Let me zoom you guys in. I can't tell if it's artsy or it just looks like a mess, um, but it's what we're going with today. So I didn't want to put on any lashes because I feel like it's just going to cover up everything. So I went in with the Better Than Sex from Too Faced mascara, which I normally hated. But I think it's like now the only mascara that kind of helps keep my lashes curled and like staying up instead of like falling down. So that's what I went with. Okay, and so for highlight, I had a new one that I was going to use from e.l.f. for my birthday. I'm going to go in with the Brain Freeze because there is a highlighter here that has some blue in it and that is called freeze tag and I'm gonna use this on the cheeks for a little bit of a blue highlight. I like this one though because it's like the skin frost so it's not like super blinding so it's not gonna be like super glittery and super blue it's just gonna be kind of like you turn your head a little bit and like you see the blue. What I am gonna do though is take some of the light lock highlight fluid from about face and I think I'm gonna put some of this on my chest. We'll see it's not really the same color either so I'm just going to like drop a little bit onto my hand, take a nice big brush, and maybe just put this all over. Alright, so I feel like using your hands actually works to like rub that in. And it just gives you like a nice little like sheen. Like that's cute. Like admire my collarbones because I like that part of my body. I don't know why, but I do. And now it's going to be red and agitated because I rubbed it and then hopefully the redness will go away. All right, I just set my face with the All Nighter Setting Spray because I need this makeup to last. I don't know what I'm feeling about this makeup. I think it's kind of cool. It's not exactly what I wanted. I also did a little bit more than I was intending on doing. I was just going to do a blue regular makeup look with a pop of yellow and then I just went a little crazy and had a little fun. So I'm really, really liking this. This is such a collector's item. If you love Van Gogh, if you love art, Storybook Cosmetics First Impressions, pretty good. There are a couple of shades, like I said, that swatched a little weird, but they went on the eye pretty fine. Um, I just went around and kind of just like threw a bunch of colors on my face. So I'm definitely excited to play around with this some more. And like I said, I normally don't wear a blue eyeshadow. So I think that's like what's throwing me off, but I don't know. I think I look a little smoky, a little starry nighty, a little, something. I don't know. But I'm excited to go check out Van Gogh's um, exhibit today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you are notified every time I post a new video. I love you guys and subscribe to my channel and welcome you to Feeling Family. Bye!